want to get your opinions on, especially like you're forming, creating, sustaining a biblical household, which is really hard to do in this culture. I feel like a lot of people aren't just not doing it. They don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. How do you combat the culture in your household and stay biblical with your children? I'm convicted. Listen, I, I, I can't, I, I can give you strategies all day long. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing new under the sun, but the Lord downloaded to me something very specific uh, several years ago. And I reference it as the divine order or kingdom order. Um, I, I, I've gotten this question a lot. Mm -hmm. And it happened to come my way multiple times long, long before the world got even crazier in the last three years. And they're like, well, how do you do it? Like, how do you juggle it all? And I was like, you know what? I think the whole world has gotten it wrong. Most people are talking about striving for balance. And it's not balance. I think there's an order to where, to what God has given us. And I don't think I know because he showed me very specifically in the book of Genesis, which I'm going to get to. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when he calls us to focus on things, he's not expecting us to have it all right all the time, but he gives us main areas to make sure that, that we're holding to a standard of excellence. And when you look at Genesis, it's, it's, it's really clear. He took me to literally Genesis 1.1. And um, if you look at how he set up creation, mm -hmm. it helps us create our home team. And the first thing he did was, um, you know, in, in the beginning, right? There was a dark and formless void. Hmm. Interesting. Isn't that what the world looks like right now? Yeah. Um, we're in a dark and formless void. Sometimes our homes can feel like that. Sometimes our marriages can feel like that. Sometimes our physical health can feel like that. Sometimes our finances can feel like that. So we have to hover like he did. He hovered and he saw there was chaos. So the first thing he said was let there be light. And he wasn't talking about sunlight. It was him, right? The great mm -hmm. I am. He, he, he puts himself in front of it all and he creates that separation. And so that's what we have to remember. He's first and foremost. And if we're trying to put the cart before the horse, that's where we go wrong immediately. And he's the first thing he did after, you know, uh, you know, us realizing there's an awareness that we have to have that he's the one, he's the author. He set up an environment. So whether you're trying to get your finances in order, trying to get your marriage in order, trying to get your body in order, trying to get your faith in order. If you haven't, if you don't have your environment set up for success, you're already behind the eight ball. Hmm. Now, I'm not, I don't suggest that your house needs to look like Pinterest because mine certainly doesn't. Right. But we need to have a sense of order here. You know, you need to have things in place that, uh, that allow for the right conversations to be had. If you're trying to get your health in order, well, your pantry is probably the great, a good place to start. Your refrigerator yeah. is probably a good place to start. If you need your finances in order, you need to get a good, have a good awareness of like where money's coming in and where it's going out. You know, that, that's environment. He set that up so that the order of life that were to come after had a place to thrive. So environment's one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then um, he obviously created plant life, animal life, and then human life. But he started with Adam. This is very important. This is very important. He started with Adam. and He gave Adam a job. He had Adam have authority over everything else. He told him to name the animals. He had authority. So he was already a leader. But Adam was fully equipped. There was He didn't mess up with Adam. The Lord didn't say, hey, I messed up. He said he's lonely. And what did he do? He didn't say, hey, Adam, what do you think about this Eve chick? How would you like her to look? He put him to sleep because God doesn't need any interruptions from our own, our own doing. Right. And he put him to sleep and he formed Eve. He formed woman. And when he awoke, he looked at her and said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. So he knew her. So when, when we look at the order of our own homes, and we oftentimes look at other people to fix us. Like, I, I can't look at my husband and expect him to, quote unquote, make me happy or complete me. I have to look at God's order and say, like, have I set up my environment, whether it's mentally, spiritually, physically or whatever, for, for success today? How am I first talking to God and then talking to myself before I can go talk to my husband? Like, mm -hmm. he set up the individual before he even created relationship. So you got to come with it. You know, like you, you can't come expecting everyone to fill your gaps. Like you got to come with it and knowing that you are a whole in the image of God. Yeah. So I teach my children that I teach, uh, you know, we, we teach that as a couple, like my children have to drink the well from our marriage. 
you know, and that means that we have to be accountable to ourselves first. I have to hold myself accountable to a standard that God has created me for. I can't expect it from David. But with that relationship, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Then he gave him a mission field. You know, so oftentimes we get up and it's like the first thing on our mind is work. The first thing on our mind is our finances. The first thing on our mind is something outside of our homes. And because of this this small box that I have in my hand right now that I have access to the literal world's conversations mm-hmm. 24 hours a day in my pocket. Yeah. Well, God didn't expect he, he's like trying to get through on FM and you're messing around on AM. <laughs> oh, so like you can't hear him or his order for your life and what he has for you because you're so distracted by all the other things that you're trying to gain control of. And that's when we start to white knuckle the process. So biblical order in our home is really big. And the minute that I notice things are going awry, I can usually pinpoint where we've dropped the ball. Wow. Go back to the beginning. This is like, I hope you don't think I'm dazing off. I'm, I seriously feel that this is so insightful. Like I've never heard anyone dissect Genesis one, one, one five, like to that extent. 